our agenda is our candidate. No campaign materials like signs or buttons or t-shirts are allowed. We conduct ourselves with respect and dignity and will refrain from booing. If we are not in agreement with something we hear, silence is the best response. Si necesitan traducción en español, tendremos aparatos disponibles para su uso. Hable con un miembro del equipo de piso si necesita ayuda. The bathrooms are in the front area by the door you came in. Please, set your cell phones on silent or turn them off. Everyone here should have an agenda and a get out the vote card. Does everyone have both? Yes. Look for a 14 if you do not. We need approval of the meeting agenda. Cops Metro, are you in favor of the agenda tonight? Yes. And now I'd like to invite our co-chairs, Simon Martinez and Steve Mendoza, to take their places in the front, along with the Cops Metro leaders and the candidates. Our co-chairs, a round of applause. Good evening. Good evening. I am Simon Martinez from El Carmen Catholic Church. And I am Steve Mendoza, leader from Our Lady Guadalupe Catholic Church here in Hermosa, Texas. I would like to invite our seminarian, Brother Ed Gonzalez, to lead us in prayer. Brother Ed. Blessed are you, Lord God, creator of heaven and earth, you who call us to be holy as you are holy, loving as you are loving, and merciful as you are merciful. We ask that you be with us tonight to help us to remember and to recognize the dignity of all people, especially the marginalized in our midst. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, brother. We are here tonight as citizens who have heard the call to act. We are fed up with political messages that divide us. Tonight, on the other side of town, there's a debate between Pinto O'Rourke and Ted Cruz. We know what they're going to say. We know they will attack one another. And we know that the citizens will be in the background, the audience. Our culture of democracy will not be revived if we are treated like audience members in someone else's game. So tonight, it's about the substance that will make a difference to us and our commitment to act. Cops and Metro will ask candidates to commit to our agenda of issues, issues such as immigration, public education, workforce development, and payday lending. These are the issues that affect our daily lives. We don't endorse candidates of either party. Our candidate is our agenda. Our strength is our willingness to act together. I grew up in the west side of San Antonio, in an area surrounded by crime, dilapidated houses, and streets in rampant despair. Cops Metro gave us a voice, and we organized 
to change our environment for the better. We didn't wait for the politicians to save us. Today, the issues are different, but the method is the same. Motivated and well organized, we will succeed. It is up to us to continue the legacy of organizing for power, dignity, and service to our neighbors. And now, let's recognize who from COPS Metro is in the room. I'm Michelle Shera from St. Francis of Assisi Catholic Church. I'm Scott Wilson Price from First Unitarian Universalist Church. We have COPS Metro member institutions from across San Antonio tonight. When you hear your name called, please stand and stay standing. Sisters of the Holy Spirit. St. Timothy Catholic Church. Deacon Hill Academy. St. Bonaventure Catholic Church. Our Lady of the Holy Spirit, San Antonio. El Carmen Catholic Church. Sacred Heart Catholic Church. conversations in our member institutions. We have listened to identify concerns and done the research to know how to address these issues. Let's talk about the COPS Metro agenda. The first issue, public education. Public education is crucial for democracy and prosperity. This budget year, Texas will spend 3.6% less per student in public school than they did in 2010. The state share of public education funding has dropped from 45% in 2008 to 35% in this coming year. This means fewer resources, higher property taxes, and the students the one that suffers. State legislature must pass meaningful school finance reform. I want to invite Anna Espasa to share a story with us. My name is Anna Espasa. I am from St. Bonaventure's Cops Metro. The district has struggled over the years, but it's getting better. Still, in house meetings in the last couple of years, we heard stories of kids who were forced to sit on upside down buckets. We had to lay off teachers, cut staff, school programs for the children. I had a student approach me last year about a program that had been cut from her high school that was helping her and fellow students to prepare for college. No notice was given to the students, and she didn't know what she was going to do. We tried passing a tax ratification election at TRE this past year, but it barely failed. 
because residents fear the increase of property taxes. We would not be in this position if the state government was paying for its fair share. We need this great state of Texas to step up and increase the funding for the traditional school districts so these programs do not get cut. And we can provide these students our future, the kids I see at Mass every Sunday, the help that they need. Thank you. Our second issue this evening is payday lending. In Texas, there are, there are 3,500 payday lending businesses who operate by different rules than other lending organizations. And they victimize our neighbors and the vulnerable with bad loans. We must challenge our elected officials to apply Chapter 342 of the Texas Finance Code to all businesses, including payday lenders and other loan title businesses, to make sure that our neighbors aren't getting roped into bad deals. Another issue is workforce development. 26 years ago, Cops Metro built one of the finest job training programs in the country Yay. called Project Quest. <laughs> we take motivated individuals earning low wages and support them as they are prepared for solid middle class jobs. Thanks to Quest, 7,050 people in San Antonio have gone from poverty to the middle class. The economic impact over 25, 25 years has been $1.67 billion. <laughs> and the return on investment for every dollar spent is more than $19. The money that supports Quest isn't a fat tax break or corporate subsidy. It's an investment in us and our people. Good evening. My name is Alejandra Alejandro. Alejandro. I am a child from the West Side. That's right, the West Side. My parents worked hard to provide for our family of six. We had a good life. Every morning, I would see my mom wake up before sunrise to start her job at the Levi Stardust Company. Then one day, my mother received some horrible news. The factory was closing. Our family was devastated, but my parents were strong. My dad picked up two more jobs, and my mom won another job. Out of the devastation, Cops Metro uh, created Project Quest. Eventually, it would help me dream, reach my dream job and becoming a registered nurse. All rural town in Mexico, where she delivered babies with limited supplies and knowledge. She inspired me to become a nurse to help my community. As a single mom of two sons, there were times where my goals seemed unreachable. I struggled to raise my two sons, work as a medical assistant, and completed my coursework. It took me eight years to finish my prereqs to become an afford one class per semester. I felt the pressure in the world telling me to give up, but I didn't. Then I accepted the project project for the new And I found new hope. I would help get the help with my tuition, books, uniforms, gas vouchers, rent, and electrical bills. Exactly what I needed. I could still prioritize my sons. Now I could study full time and work part time as well. So. I graduated in May and I will start my new job on October 22nd. Alright. Prior to my request, I was making $15.25 an hour. That's right, $15.25. But as of next Monday of October 22nd, my base pay will be $23 per hour. Yeah. <laughs> and then on this is going to be $40,000, $47,000. $840, that's a 67% increase in my wages. Yeah. Yeah. I have a new job and show my children how to reach their dreams. Project West is invested in people like me, candidates, 
please remember my story budget accordingly. Thank you. Thank you, Alejandra. I'm Linda Davila from St. Timothy. This, this fall, if you live in San Antonio, you'll vote on propositions A, B, and C. The biggest loser of the city charter propositions will be local democracy. Let me say that again. Biggest loser, local democracy. The advertisements on TV for propositions A, B, and C talk about the city's AAA bond rating and rating in the city manager. But Cox Metro cares most about the effect on San Antonio's democratic life. For months, Cox Metro talked with the city and the firefighters. We asked the city to drop the lawsuit. We asked the firefighters to drop the petition drive. We asked them both to return to negotiating. Neither side moved. And here we are, cleaning up after them. Caught in the crossfire between go vote no and vote yes on the three charter amendments. Democracy is about negotiation and compromise. If you do democracy right, groups hash out their differences and arrive at mutually beneficial solutions. Democracy is messy, yes. Sometimes the resolution isn't perfect, but it does a more than decent job of getting stakeholders to the table and hopefully a part of the solution. Our society can only govern itself if we have the patience and ability to compromise. If successful, Proposition A will open a Pandora's box. Anyone with big money can and will throw democracy into chaos with a never-ending series of referenda. We like negotiated solutions. If Prop A passes, every policy can be subject to recall. Instead of a system where each group gets some of what they want, Prop A ensures there will always be winners and losers. In the end, the real winners will be people paid to collect signatures and run the campaign. We will be the losers. This is not the city we want. The member institution of Cops Metro will vigorously turn out the vote against Proposition A because it threatens to undermine our democracy in San Antonio. We urge everyone to vote no on A. Thank you. Our next issue would be immigration. Many of our friends and neighbors and fellow parishioners are immigrants. In my Catholic tradition, it says in Matthew 25, I was a stranger and you took me in. Yet, at the state and federal level, there is hostility towards immigrants. Cops Metro wants citizenship for DACA, youth, and the TPS recipients, and better relations between our police and immigrants. My day is Francesca Heiser from this church. In 2000, my last change. I was in my country when three corrupt police officers took my car, my purse, and my banking documents. They call and say, if I didn't get more money, they will harm me. I was terrified. Two of my older brothers were robbed, shot, and killed by corrupt police. My sister in the United States offered to help. To help. I had a duty visa and took a flight and came to the United States. Leaving everything behind. I was 44 years old. I had three degrees and a good job. But the saddest part was leaving my father, my friends, and my church community. But my decision was, stay on that, 
Oja de Kores to start over again. Here, immediately, I applied for political asylum, but I got denied. I applied again with more detail, but I got denied again. My sister sent a petition for me, and they approved it. But I need to go. I need to go back to my country and wait there for ten years. I was too afraid to go back to El Salvador. I was in the middle of this problem when, in 2001, El Salvador was hit with three horrible earthquakes, terremotos. For this reason, President Bush gave TPS to the Salvadorian people like me, who were already here. We are TPS, I might not be here. Eventually, after 10 years waiting, I got my residence and I became citizen two years ago. <laughs> Many people are not lucky like me. DACA and TPS have been terminated. Now, my friend must leave. They got this country. They pay taxes and social security. Young people with DACA are living with the same pain. I am very disappointed about our country's immigration policy today. But I want to do something about it. And our elected official can change these policies. Between <laughs> tonight and the election, I am going to walk with Caps Metro to get out the vote. I'm asking you to do the same with me. Thank you, Ms. Isaac. Our strategy for the fall began back in June with the immigration postcard campaign that some of you may remember. We have some great and big news to announce tonight. With Archbishop Gustavo, we committed ourselves to produce 11,000 postcards to send to our elected representatives. <laughs> and even better news, guys, from across San Antonio and the Archdiocese, we will be sending 27,494 postcards to the communities, send to the and various conventional people. Give yourself a round of applause. Garcia, and I'm from the Catholic Church. My name is Henry Garcia, and I'm a Catholic Metro leader from St. Francis of the Catholic Church. Before we see where the candidates stand on our agenda, we need to talk about Congressman Hurd. He is absent tonight, but not for our lack of trying. We tried for two and a half months to get him here today. In July, our leaders twice contacted Congressman Hurd's office asking for a meeting. On August 7th, our leaders went to his office and offered him the opportunity to choose the date of this accountability session. Two cop metro leaders even went down to Del Rio to see him at a meeting with our sister organization, the Border Organization. But late August, we had we had to set an, our, a date for of our own. We called, delivered invitations by certified mail, 
and even hand him and deliver an invitation. He chose not to come. Cops Metro is a nonpartisan organization. We do not support parties or candidates. We have both Republicans and Democrats here tonight from Texas House Districts 117 and 118. Because Congressman Hurt isn't here tonight, we don't know where he stands or an agenda. And we have chosen to indicate his answers with a question mark. In our get out to vote effort, we will not be able to report where he stands on our issues. We now invite Ms. Gino Elise Jones to stand as a candidate for Congressional District 23. Ms. Ortiz Jones, we ask for yes or no answers. You will have time to, at the end to elaborate. As a reminder, our leaders watching should cheer if the candidates support our agenda. If not, please remain silent. The first question for tonight is on workforce development. The Department of Labor has provided fund, funding used by Project Quest in San Antonio and other programs across Texas. If elected, Will you commit to ensure that the federal budget leverages $2 million in funding for Project Quest? Yes. We have two questions on immigration for you. We have DACA and TPS recipients in almost every member institution of Congress. If elected, will you work immediately to pass legislation to provide citizenship to DACA and TPS recipients, including by discharge petition of if House leadership does not agree to take up this issue. Yes. The second question is, as Archbishop Gustavo said in June, the separation of families at the border is immoral and evil. If elected, will you work to pass legislation to make the separation of families at the U.S. border unlawful? Yes. And finally, if elected, will you meet with Cox Metro within six weeks of taking office to develop a work plan for these issues? Yes. responses. There will be a timekeeper who will take who will keep track of the time. A yellow sign will be displayed when 50 second, 15 seconds are left, and a red sign will be displayed when time is up. Wonderful. Well, thank you again. Um, I wanted to, uh, you know, I know the leadership that you all uh, have shown, not only talking about issues, but all of the strong leadership on immigration, education, and even making sure people have a living wage. Uh, so thank you for your leadership. Thank you for inviting me this evening. Uh, look, when I'm in Congress, you're not going to have to send me postcards to do the right thing. I know what the right thing is. My thoughts on this are shaped by my own life experiences. I went to John Jay High School, a high school where you start with 900 kids, only 500 graduate. It was an Air Force ROTC scholarship that invested in me, allowed me to get an education. So that's why I think public education is so important. I actually see my former calculus teacher here from John Jay, Mr. Vogelsang. Uh, I was a great student, right? Uh, <laughs> But I know public education is the great equalizer. And that's why it's, I think it's also important when we talk about leveling the playing field, it starts with investing in workforce development. I think that's key. Texas, San Antonio is now the second largest city in Texas. However, one in four children in San Antonio lives in poverty. So we have a challenge, all of us have a challenge with generational poverty, and I think it's on all of us to make sure that we invest in education, invest in workforce development, so we move forward not only as a city, but as a district and as a country. On immigration, I'm fully committed to this. I'm a first-generation American. My mother came to this country after graduating from the birth, uh, number one university in the Philippines, but came here as a domestic helper. That's what I think about when I think about immigration, that for the vast majority of people on this planet, they know from a very young age that in order to live their best life, they'll have to leave their home country. And for many people, the tries that means coming to our very special country. So I think, yes, of course, we have to reunite these families. If you look on your agenda, it only shows San Antonio, but this district goes all the way to El Paso. So the number of times that I've been to Tornillo, Tornillo is the 10th community where there's these kids, these 1,500 kids now uh, have been set up. I think that's a stain on the American conscience. I look forward to passing legislation immediately that puts an end to that. Uh, thank you.
I now invite our candidates from the Texas House of Representatives to stand. The candidates for District 117 are Philip Cortez and Michael Bernanga. 117, 117 includes Helotus, the far west side, and southwest San Antonio. It includes this church, Divine Providence, and part of St. Bonaventure. The candidates for District 118 are John Lujan and Leo Pacheco. 118 includes most of the south side of San Antonio and South Bear County. It includes St. Bonaventure, Our Lady of Angels, St. Leo's, and El Carmen. Candidates, please remember that we are asking for yes or no answers for the first questions. You will have two minutes at the end to elaborate. Cops Metro, if the candidates do not stand with our agenda, please remember that silence is the best response. The first question is on public education. The state's share of spending on public education has declined significantly, and we spend less per student now than before the recession. Mr. Cortez, if elected, will you commit to increasing the state's share of funding for traditional public schools? Yes. Mr. Bernardo, the same question. Absolutely. Mr. Bernardo. Mr. Pacheco. Yes. Thank you. The second question is on payday lending. Payday lenders and auto loan title businesses play their own rig rules. <laughs> Mr. Pacheco, if elected, will you support holding payday lending and auto title businesses to the same standards as other consumer lenders in Texas using Chapter 342 of the Texas Finance Code? Yes. Mr. Lujan, same question. Yes. Yes. The third question for tonight is on workforce and development. The ACE Fund must be part of the budget this year to support Project Quest. Mr. Cortez, if elected, will you commit to sponsoring and helping pass legislation restoring and increasing state funding to ten million for the ACE Fund. Yes, absolutely. Mr. Berlanga? Yes. Mr. Lujan? Yes. Mr. Pacheco? Yes. Thank you. Fourth question is on immigration. Senate Bill 4 creates fear among our immigrant friends, family, and neighbors, and make our cities less safe. Mr. Pacheco, if elected, would you commit to repeating Senate Bill 4 and working across the aisle to ensure humane, moderate, and immigration policies? Yes. 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 Father, before I fight it again. Yes. Our fifth question is on local control. Cox Metro has won major victories that set the standard for the state including on living wages. But state government could interfere and undo many of these victories if they don't permit cities to make decisions for themselves. Mr. Cortez, if elected, will you commit to vigorously defend local control for issues such as local tax rates, wage increases, and immigration enforcement? Yes. Mr. Bernardo. No. Mr. Lujan. Yes. Mr. Pacheco. Yes. Candidates, just like for you to turn in the back, we're keeping a scorecard of how you're answering, okay? So last question for y'all. Mr. Pacheco is elected. Would you commit to meeting with top mental leaders within six weeks to develop a work plan on these issues and would you like to hold the account? Would you meet with us? Yes. Mr. Lujan? Definitely yes. Mr. Belanga? Yes. Mr. Cortez? Let's meet tomorrow. <laughs> now, Mr. Cortez, you have two minutes to elaborate on your answers. Well, good evening, Cops Metro. How are you tonight? I'm very honored to be standing here today because I've been working side by side and fighting side by side with many of you for many years now. I didn't just enter public service recently. In fact, ever since I was working back at City Hall as a council assistant for then Mayor Ed Garza, I've been working with many of you 
to ensure that we continue to fund important issues that COPS Metro is fighting for each and every day. When I was elected to City Council, each and every year you held me accountable and you said, will you support funding Project Quest and increasing that funding? Each and every year I voted yes on the City Council. That is the type of commitment that you have for me. This isn't just something I decided to do recently. I've been fighting for my community, whether it's the St. Bonaventure area where I'm from or the Holotus area, which I currently represent. I've been fighting for this community to ensure that we do have living wages for all families, that all families have access to good paying jobs, that we treat our immigrants with respect, and that we ensure that our senior citizens have a voice at the state capitol. And the reason I have this agenda, and I've been doing this each and every day, is because you gave me this agenda. You continue to call me, you continue to meet with me, and you tell me these are important priorities to you and the families that you represent. And I'm proud each and every day to stand with Cops Metro Alliance. You held me accountable now. I've been, I've been very blessed to be an elected official since 2007, whether on the San Antonio City Council or now in the State House. You've held me accountable each and every year. I hope and pray that you will continue to hold me accountable as we move forward to pass each and every one of these issues on your legislative agenda. Thank you so much for allowing me to say a few words this evening. I look forward to seeing all of you at the State Capitol beginning in January when we begin our next legislative session. May God bless each and every one of you. May God bless Texas. Thank you very much. It's been long as he said. I'm the son of a Mexican immigrant. You wouldn't know if I'm a fair skin, but my grandfather died during the Mexican Revolution. My father came over as an infant, and my mother, my grandmother was a professor of English, of Spanish rather, to those who couldn't speak Spanish. I was at St. Anthony Seminary when my father died suddenly of a stroke, and the calling wasn't to be a priest, as many of you have given that calling, but I bless you in my memory because I know without your support, from those of the, in the religious order, I wouldn't have gotten through Central Catholic in three years and St. Mary's University in three years. I wouldn't stand before you with a master's degree in tax. My life has been about lowering people's taxes because people of church and charity make the difference in my life. They make the difference in the lives of many who rise above the ability to be limited by what the government will do for us versus what we can do without the government. So my position is this. If you should elect me, my priority issue is to lower property taxes so that we are not renting from the government our homes. That we recognize that there is what we recognize that there is a time and a place for all of us because the message of Christ is clear. Feed the hungry, heal the sick, and care for the weakest among us. I am president of the Christian Chamber of San Antonio, it is not a partisan organization. And I recognize that the opportunity to find Republicans to learn how to find Democrats when two-thirds of Republicans do not have a Democrat friend and two-thirds of Democrats do not have a Republican friend, I tell you, as a Christian, I will lead from that core value. And I will tell you also that as a Christian, I will happen to lean either way as we need to get progress accomplished. I am not a Republican who goes to church on Sunday. Thank you very much. Time. You have two minutes to elaborate. Thank you. My name is Chad Luhan, running for state representative, District 118. At one time, I was a state representative for one year. And one of the things that I learned, I'm a retired San Antonio firefighter for 25 years. I'm a small business owner. And one of the things that I learned that this job is not so much in Austin, but it's collaborating with people like Cops Metro to get things done in our community. We have the second largest tire dump in the city of San Antonio in my district, 118. Been there for years, didn't know about it. When I became rep, man, we fought that thing. I got, uh, El Carmen called me and said, we have a community out here with no roads. We got together and began to fight those things. When we get together, it's not so much you coming to me, I'm gonna be coming to you. We talk about education. Two failing school districts in my district. In one district, 118, that's not acceptable. We need more money, but it's more than that. It's school board reform. It's gonna be tough things that we're gonna do that are gonna make people that are Republicans mad, they're going to make people look at Democrats are men, but it needs to be done for the betterment of our people. I wanted to take those stands. I've been blessed with uh, with my church service that I do, with me being a police officer for six and a half years and then retired firefighter, and now a, a, a businessman. 
And I'm telling you, we, I'm bidding on workforce development. We can break cycles of poverty by teaching technology. I'm doing that with my company right now. We went from three people in 1999. We have over 450 people, employees in our company today. God has been good to us, but I've learned a lot of experiences and things along the way. I ask for your support. I'm ready to get things working, put those things uh, to practice. John Lujan, District 118. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. set up. Okay, Mr. Pacheco. Thank you very much for having me here. Uh, just a little uh, background about myself. I've been in community service all my life. Uh, my father was a deacon at St. Leo's Catholic Church uh, for over 35 years before he passed away. And I was always working with him in the St. Vincent de Paul Society. Uh, he would go get bread from the day old bread from HEB, he would give it out to the poor. And this is something that we did. There was just something instilled in me, um, community service. Uh, I was the first one in my family to get a college education, and it wasn't the easy way. I went to uh, uh, high school, graduated, and I did the typical thing. I went one semester at San Antonio College and dropped out. You know, I had no money for you know, cafeteria, I had Pell Grant, but I had no money for gas. I had no money for for uh, cafeteria, and I did the typical thing. And I got married, and it was not until I was in my 40s, working hard during the day, eight-hour shifts, nine-hour shifts, and going to college. And I graduated from San Antonio College, went on to Texas A&M, San Antonio, went on to the University of Texas, San Antonio, get my master's. And today, I'm an example of hard work, of what somebody can do using the community college system. I graduated from Harlandale High School. I still live in the Harlandale uh, School District. And I remember back in the late 70s with Father McCarthy at St. Leo Catholic Church starting the COPS organization. This was something that was brand new at the time. Unfortunately, the parish I'm at, St. Lawrence, doesn't have a COPS uh, chapter, and I want to look into that because I think it's very important. But moving forward, uh, currently I, uh, I'm the head of human resources at Palo Alto College, and I uh, also teach uh, as an adjunct professor at San Antonio College for uh, public uh, administration, and I'm teaching urban planning this semester. So I want to continue to help the community. Thank you very much. Thank you, candidates. Our strategy doesn't end tonight. It begins tonight. Thanks to our work this summer, we have up-to-date contact information for 3,148 voters in these three districts alone and another 6,000 across San Antonio. We will make a difference in this election. Let me give you two examples. The last election in Texas House District 117, the difference between the winner and the loser was only 1,500 votes. The last election in Congressional District 23, the difference between the winner and the loser was only 3,000 votes. Cops Metro, you will impact this election by getting your people out to vote. Before the election, we will be holding six Get Out the Vote events, phone banks and black walks. We want everyone in this room to participate in the democratic process and come to at least one of these Get Out the Vote events. Take the commitment card on your chair. Take two minutes to talk to the person next to you about which event you will attend. Fill out the card, then pass the card to the middle. Is that clear? Take two minutes. Thank you, two minutes. Thank you.
There's a lot of talking, no writing. No writing. seconds here. Please pass your cards through the center and our four people gathering. Pass more to the center, please. the events that are taking place. We look in the back of the card. Okay, real good. Tonight, we have heard stories about the issues that are important to us. Cops Metro. We have also heard where the candidates stand on our agenda, Cops Metro. Now it's time for us to act on what we've heard tonight. Are you ready, Cops Metro? Yeah. Do you want something different from politics as usual? Yeah. Then let's go out and do it. Join your member institutions to make a difference in this year's big term elections beginning with government tomorrow night. Everybody agree? Yeah! We come to the conclusion of our meeting right now. Before we go to the final prayer, just a few words of thanks for joining us here this evening at our Lady of Guadalupe and Halotis. So thank you for being here. The other thing is to your left is a scorecard. And that's what you're going to take back to your institutions. You're going to talk to your members and say, this is where their positions are. Do they or do they not support our agenda? So remember that. So, si se puede o no se puede? Si se puede. Si se puede. Okay, very good. At this time, I'd like to invite Father, Father John Oscar Landu of St. Bonaventure Catholic Church to close our meeting with a prayer. <coughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, in the times of old, you anointed the Holy Prophets to fight for justice, to speak the word of truth, to be the voice of the voiceless. Today, we are the prophets of time. You have called us to act. 
to speak your word of truth, your word of justice, and your word of peace. Send for your Holy Spirit to stand us in our fight for justice and peace, that we may be the visible sign of your love in our communities. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Father Oscar. Now we've come to the conclusion of our meeting, so this meeting is officially adjourned. Thank you for your attendance this evening.